so now we have this phosphate so what to do with the phosphate now so the phosphate is a granule similar to the fine sand and ship dry dry gray and no moisture content it don't have any moisture content now next is characteristic in which we have okay it is not having angle of repose is zero nothing bulk density then 893 is storage factors group c so uh, phosphate this one is having low fire risk this is the hazard and precautions is that bulges this protection of machinery and accommodation spaces because of the dust here is the dust of the cargo and the bilge well of the cargo spaces shall be protected from the uh, ingress of the cargo due to the consideration shall be paid to the protect uh, means all the deck equipment shall be protected uh, and shall be covered up because the dust dust can uh, malfunction this uh, uh, machinery is on the deck and the persons who are uh, working in these environment should wear protective clothing goggles and eye protection and dust masks so they have to wear all these okay now the next cargo is potash so potash is a brown pink and a white in a color potash is produced in the granule crystal it is odorless and hygroscopic so it is having angle of repose also bulk density is given storage factor is given size is given and it is not an amdg so no class and it is in group c so it is hygroscopic so it will form cake when it will be wet and it is having low fire risk and then it is not to be loaded during the precipitation and the cargo holds which are uh, which are not in use shall be closed cargo this is during the loading of this cargo all the non working hatches of the cargo spaces to which the cargo are loaded or to uh, be loaded sh shall be closed and load for all cargoes generally for all cargoes trimming procedures are as given in section 4 and 5 of this rmsbc code there are 14 sections so in that fourth and fifth section now ventilation shall not be carried out during the voyage then carriage may prevent water ingress discharge avoid the formation of overhangs that is by the hardening or in case the water ingresses there and clean up is cargo spaces and the bilge well shall be thoroughly swept clean and washed out to remove all traces of the cargo except in case of the cargo to be loaded has the same uh, that is potash so Yeah. So the cargo spaces in the bilges shall be thoroughly swept, cleaned. This means that washing should be there in bilges because these, uh, if they will not be dry and water content will be there, so it will mix up with the cargo and the cargo will form the cakes. Then potassium chloride. So this potassium chloride is also known as MOP. So this MOP I have shown it before. So it is the same thing MOP or potassium chloride so why this one uh, so let's description let's see the description brown pink and white in the color powder potassium chloride is produced in a granule crystal it is odorless and is soluble in water hygroscopic then angle of repose is there bulk density storage factor group and sizes and there is no class so why this one is heavily corrosion when wet when it is wet it will corrode heavily it is having low fire risk and it is hygroscopic so it will form the Cake when it will be wet. Okay, clean, dry as relevant to the hazards of the cargo. So the cargo holds should be clean and dry. Weather precautions shall not be handled during the precipitation. It means if rain is there, so don't load the cargo. And during handling, if we are handling, but no rain, ah, we are loading. This means that we are loading. So all the other hatches which is not been uh, used like we are ho uh, loading in hold number 2 so hold number 1 hold number 3 hold number 4 hold number 5 shall all be closed now ventilation is the cargo spaces carrying this cargo shall not be ventilated during the voyage then carriage 
is during the carriage the cargo hold shall be sealed to prevent the water ingress and the charge shall be trimmed to avoid forming of overhangs that is overhangs can be formed up so cleaning is after the discharge of the cargo the cargo spaces and the bilge well and shall be swept clean and thoroughly washed up so it should be cleaned properly and bilges and the cargo spaces shall be cleaned properly and um, washed up properly so next cargo we have sugar so sugar is in the form of brown and white granules uh, with a very low moisture content that is 0 to 0.05 percent only and 3 mm granules angle of repose is no then 3 to 5 1000 1 decimal 00 to 1.60 stowage factor and group c so what is hazard actually for this one when it is mixed up with the liquid or with the water so it liquefies so this is only the hazard like it has been written as sugar dissolved in the water in case of the water may result in the creation of the air pocket in the body of the cargo with the ship's motion the hazards then is similar to the hazard present by the cargo which may liquefy so liquefaction can be there and in case of the ingress of the water into the hold the risk of the stability of the ship Through dissol uh, dissolution of the sugar, that is syrup, like syrup substance will be formed. So that's why it will be liquefied and the liquid will be on the top and all this. So should be recognized the cargo is highly soluble. So this means that in case of water, it is highly soluble. So we have to always ensure that bilges are properly cleaned, the hatch covers are properly sealed up. and in case of rain we cannot load this so this is because of the hazards only so this will be written only let's see that's uh, weather precaution weather so shall not be carried out during precipitation that is rain and not working hatches the hatches which is not working we are not working on those hatches shall be closed because if it is open in precipitation or anything or any water ingress is there so it will contaminate itself the cargo so that's why we don't have to we have to keep this uh, hatches which we are not working shall be closed uh, where the cargo is to be loaded and uh, after the completion of the loading of the cargo the hatches of the cargo space shall be sealed to prevent the water ingress as necessary okay so next one is sulfur so sulfur un number 1350 this means it is in imdg So this is class four point one. Already you can see this is the IMDG. Then angle of repose is nothing. Bulk density, storage factor, group is given, and sizes are given. So hazard is flammability and as explosion, especially during the loading and unloading and after the discharging and cleaning. So after discharging uh, of the uh, sulfur, there is a dust explosion can there or during the loading also. this cargo may ignite readily also so this should be also prevention that during loading and unloading we have to keep in mind that the dust explosion is also there and the cargo ignition is also there so we have to keep these things in the mind and this cargo is non combustible as has a low fire risk it is having a low fire risk but it is ig ignition is possible as well as explosion is possible with the dust so dust explosion and ignition still it is possibility Okay, and segregation and storage. What is written is separated from the food stuffs, so we have to keep away from the food stuff. Then trimming as a fourth fire, 
and when this cargo is involved in the fire a toxic very irritating and suffocating gases is evolved so gases are irritating and suffocating gases are evolved the cargo forms explosive and sensitive mixtures with most oxidizing material so oxidizing material or anything which reacts with the sulfur will form a very explosive and sensitive mixture so this cargo has a liability to the dust explosion which may occur especially after the discharge and during cleaning the whole trimming plates and the tank tops of the cargo spaces for the cargo shall be lime washed and coated with the paint to prevent the corrosion so to prevent the corrosion what we need to do lime washing as well as coating with the paint should be done okay upper section shall be the sound coating of shall have a sound coating of the paint electrical circuits for the equipment in the cargo spaces for the cargo which is unsuitable for the use in an explosive atmosphere shall be isolated by removing the links and the fuses that means electric supply should be taken off and the due consideration shall be paid into the isolation of the electrical circuit for the equipment in the adjacent spaces of the cargo space adjacent spaces because it can it, uh, generate the heat or spark or the electrostatic charges in case of spark or something and thus can come to the other hole and due to which the explosion can takes place so circuit in the equipment adjacent spaces of the uh, existent spaces of the cargo spaces which is unsuitable for the use in an explosive atmosphere and ventilation of the cargo spaces for the cargo shall be fitted with a spark arresting screen so spark arresting screen is also required there so spark arresters are also required okay and this fine grain fine grain sulfur shall not be transported then discharge no special requirement cleaning up so for this one cleaning up shall be only with the fresh water so no brooming nothing only with the fresh water and here the sulfuric acid is formed so it is very corrosive to the steel and it can damage as well as it is dangerous to the people who are working over there so these so during the washing the protective clothing shall be worn up an emergency procedure batten down use the shift fire fighting extinguisher installed installation is available exclusion of the air may be sufficient to control the fire okay so this is normal that whatever we are having on board we can use it and accept the water don't use water so don't use water then okay this is super phosphate this is important because it is group c cargo but still <clears throat> it is very corrosive that uh, okay this is hygroscopic also <coughs> sorry hygroscopic when uh, it will form the cakes should be kept dry as practicable because this cargo should not be handled during the precipitation during the handling of this cargo all the non working hatches and the cargo spaces into which the cargo is to be loaded shall be closed okay so the whole trimming uh, plates and the tank tops of the cargo spaces for the cargo shall be lined washed or coated with the paint to prevent the corrosion So this is corrosive. So that's why it should be protected. The cargo spaces carrying this cargo shall not be ventilated during the voyage. Okay. The moisture from the cons uh, condensation. If there is a moisture from the condensation, the cargo heating and the leaking cover uh, hatch covers may cause formation of the phosphoric or phosphorus acid. That's why I was saying it is very corrosive, which may cause the corrosion to the steel work. so it should be lime washed and painted after the completion of the loading of the cargo the hatches of the cargo space shall be sealed as necessary the cargo will decompose burlap or canvas cloth covering the bilge wells so because of these assets can be more hazardous 
so bilge covers and all this should be placed properly otherwise uh, this can corrode and take away all the metals same like a sulfuric acid it is also an acid okay urea so urea is a wide granular and an odorless commodity moisture content is less than 1% it is highly hygroscopic so it is also hygroscopic so it is having low fire risk but cakes can be there and in the presence of the moisture damage paint or corrode the steel so it can also corrode the steel okay this cargo shall be kept as dry as practicable because a small drop same like with the sugar also it is a drop of water and it will contaminate all the what uh, urea and it will can form lumps big lumps so this cargo shall be kept as dry as practicable this cargo shall not be handled during the precipitation and during handling of this cargo all the non working hatches of the cargo spaces into which the cargo is to be loaded or to be loaded shall be closed so these all this means that you should we should not handle it during the rain as well as the cargo hatches the same thing that non working cargo hatches shall be closed okay the next is some of them are not having fire and all this so it is not been discussed some of them are having some of them are not having so wood chips so wood chips are of the size of business cart so natural timber mechanically chipped this is means cut it into small pieces approximate size of a business card so business card is small one so that is business card then bulk density and all this this is mhb and this is group b so what is mhb is been discussed before so what is hazard so it discuss chemical hazard and it can deplete the oxygen depletion of the oxygen and increase of the carbon dioxide in the hold and adjacent spaces with a moisture content 15% or more this cargo has a low fire risk if its moisture content is 15% or more then it is having low fire risk if it is less than 15 then what then it is having higher fire risk so this is what this means so uh, here it is written also as the moisture content decreases the fire risk increases so when dry wood chips can be easily ignited by the external sources and readily combustible and can ignite by friction also so this means it it is not like that uh, you cannot you don't have to take care we have to take care during these times otherwise it can ignite then storage and segregation is segregation as for class 4.1 material and precaution so before entering because carbon dioxide is produced as we know that the in the hazards that has been discussed before so precaution what shall be there that before entering oxygen concentration shall be checked and then only the entry to be permitted and uh, the spaces around also the spaces close to the cargo hold shall be always checked and then entry should be made so what is written is entry of the person into the cargo spaces containing this cargo shall not be permitted until the test has been carried out and it has been established that the oxygen content has been restored to a normal level so by ventilation or by whatever but ventilation no special requirement so as required we can ventilate if somebody is making entry and in dry weather dust which settles on the deck will dry out quickly and becomes readily ignitable so it is like the small particles the fine particles which are close to the hatch covers or somewhere or it is on the deck so when it will dry up there is a highly possibility of uh, ignition of that things so we have to take care of for that one so it should be cleaned up and should be properly cleaned up appropriate precaution shall be taken to prevent fire so this is take out that thing or in case of fire what to do button down use ships fire fighting installations if fitted exclusion of the air may be sufficient to control the 
fire then medical first aid is rasper mfg okay wood pellets so wood pellets are also so here actually the wood pellets and uh, this one was also discussed like wood chips so what is wood chips definition of wood chips is this one is a natural timber mechanical chipped into a approx uh, approximate size of a business card so wood chips definition is also been given so wood pellets also the wood pellets are light blonde or to chocolate brown in the color every hard and cannot uh, they are very hard and cannot be easily squashed and wood pellets have a typical specific density between 1100 to 1700 kg per meter cube and a bulk density of 600 to 750 kg per meter cube and wood pellets are made of sawdust planer shaped and other woods which such as the bark coming out of the lumber manufacturing process so all these materials when they are uh, these are the raw material actually so these raw materials is fragmented dried and extruded into the petal form so the raw material is compressed approximately about 3.5 times and the finished wood pellets typically have a moisture content of 4 to 8% only okay now wood pellets are used so this is how the wood pellets are made from the sawdust planers shavings and the other wood waste such as bark coming out of the lumber manufacturing processes and which is compressed approximately 3.5 times and it is having 4 to 8% of the moisture content okay where is these wood pellets are used so they are used as a fuel in the district heating and the electrical power generation as well as the fuel for the small species heaters such as stoves and the fireplaces okay wood pellets are also used as an animal beading due to the absorption characteristic such wooden pellets typically have a moisture content of 8 to 10% so this is the definition and about the wood pellets and here are the angle of repose it is having 30 degrees so we have to take care of this bulk density storage factor size class is mhb and group is b so it is having chemical hazard so chemical hazard with this depleting oxygen and increase of the carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide so in that one only carbon dioxide was there but here carbon monoxide is the addition one and what swelling also swelling is exposed to the moisture if moisture will be there it will swell up and can rupture the cargo hold and then wood pellets may fragment over the time if a moisture content is over 15% leading to the generation of the asphyxiating asphyxiating and flammable gases which may cause spontaneous combustion so asphyxia and the flammable gases can be this means that the sum of the gases Uh, there can be in the gases which will be produced which will choke us so these can be also uh, caused up and the moisture content over 15% uh, leading to the generation so if moisture content is over 15% then it is and handling of the wood pellets may cause the dust to develop risk of explosion at high dust concentration Okay, so okay, oh, so handling of the wood pellets may cause dust to develop. So when we are handling, taking out here and there, so when the loading is there and the uh, discharging is there, then risk of the explosion at the high dust concentration is there. So these things should be avoided. and these are the hazards so we have to take care then storage and segregation segregation as for the class 4.1 material and then cleaning and dry as relevant to the hazard of the cargo then weather precaution this cargo shall be kept as dry as practicable this cargo shall not be handled during the precipitation okay so no rain no cargo so sorry if rain then no cargo shall not be handled during the precipitation so if rain is there so we will stop the cargo we cannot 
take the cargo and handling of this cargo all the non working hatch covers shall be closed during this cargo now this is wood chips and these are some of other precautions that the close or the close or the direct contact of this cargo and the cargo hold lighting shell as a, such as a halogen lamp shall be avoided so no halogen lamp should be used and the ventilation not to be ventilated during the voyage hatches of the cargo spaces carrying out this cargo shall be weather tight to prevent the ingress of water and then emergency procedures button down the use ships fixed fire installations exclusion of the air may be sufficient to control the fire extinguishing uh, extinguish fire with the carbon dioxide foam or water can be used okay wood pulp pallets so this is uh, again the description can be told in case somebody is asking the petals are the brown in the color very hard and cannot be easily squashed they are light and are about half the size of the bottle cork the pellets are made up of compact wood chips and then all the descriptions are then it is also group b and mhp hazards the cargo possesses a chemical hazard some shipments may be subjected to oxidation leading to the depletion of oxygen and increase in carbon dioxide so here also carbon dioxide is produced and uh, with moisture content of 15% or more the cargo has a low fire risk and if the moisture content is decreasing then the fire risk will increase and segregation as for the class 4.1 material and clean and dry as relevant to the hazard of the cargo so hold shall be clean and dry and loading is trim according to section 4 or 5 of the code precaution so any person who want to or any person entry shall be so establish the oxygen content to be restored that is normal level of the oxygen shall be there in the cargo hold then only it should be permitted to enter in dry weather dust which settles on the deck will dry out quickly and become readily ignitable so the dried cargo which is on to the deck or the residue of the cargo which is remaining on the deck can be easily ignitable so ignition can be there so we have to sweep it out we have to clean it and all this in case of fire we have to what we have to do button down use shift fire x fighting installations if fitted this means anything whatever is present we can use exclusion of the air may be sufficient to control the fire okay and zinc means nothing okay now this is appendix 2 so appendix 2 is having how many so laboratory testing procedure associated apparatus and standards so this is flow how many this three method of testing tml this transportable moisture limit can be carried out by three flow table test penetration test and protector fagersberg test so this is flow table test so these all are the points of the flow table how it is carried out but the just to know these three names is enough that it is in appendix 2 the we should know that it is in appendix 2 how it is carried out this is for the laboratories this is not for us but we should know so we should know what appendix 2 and what are the procedures that is flow table penetration test and uh, proctor uh, Fagersberg test Fagersberg test these three tests we should know so table and procedures is nothing to do with these things if somebody want can study but we should know that it is written here where it is written then concentrate and similar materials okay how to penetration test this is the second test how it is carried out and all these procedures are given ok 
okay and this is protected test and its procedures are given and the weights these are all same tests procedures yeah. here is appendix 3 that properties of the dry bulk cargoes non cohesive cargo the following cargoes are non cohesive when dry so they are non cohesive Ammonium nitrate, ammonium nitrate, these all are given in appendix 3. This we should know that it is given in appendix 3. Then appendix 4 is index. So here you can see direct reduced iron A. This is hot module and DRI direct reduced iron B is given. DRI direct reduced iron A and B. So I cannot see here DRI C. What? Okay, this one muriated of the potash. So that's why potassium chloride I have shown and I have told there that it is MOP. So this M here, M here, O and here P. So muriated of potash. It has been that's why I have told there. This is finished up nothing more so after this i will carry out with the fine sulfur and how it is to be loaded and some of the few amendments so uh, what's the next one so we will carry out with the next one now